If you've been watching my channel for basically any length of time, you probably realize that I absolutely adore these just random dumb applications where it's hard to work out why someone actually made that. And Image Magic is full of these little things that even if you use Image Magic really frequently, you may never have actually come across. So recently I looked at the screenshotting utility built into Image Magic, and today we're looking at the GUI interface for it that actually comes with the main package. Why is there a GUI interface for it? I don't know, but let's look at it nonetheless. Okay, so there's a couple of ways we can go about using this. Either we can start basically a new image like you would with something like GIMP by just running display by itself, or we can go and pass an image into it. So let's say for example, I don't know, this one right here. Now the other way we can actually go and run this is we don't have to just run the display command directly. What we can do is run magic display. Now Magic display and display do the exact same thing. Basically display is just a sim link to magic display. So whichever one just makes more sense to you. So we're going to be working with this way today and let's just run it by itself so that we can actually make a completely new image. So this is the startup screen for it and you're not actually going to see any of the controls for it until you actually go and click on the window. Now as you'd expect we go click on file then go to new it's going to prompt us for the actual, I guess, size of the canvas. Now, one thing I'd recommend doing is going and clicking on this right here to make sure it doesn't actually have a gradient for the background. So the default size is 640 by 480. That's going to be perfectly fine for what we're doing today. So let's go and click on new, and then it's going to prompt us for the actual color of the background. So we can go and set a color down here by just typing in the color, or it's got a bunch of presets in here as well. So if we go to white, we're going to work with that one right there. Click on select, and now we just have a white background. Now, I am going to give you a fair warning here. So this is quite buggy, and I've had it freeze on me very, very often. Typically what happens is when I click on a menu and then go over to here. Okay, I think it may... No, it hasn't frozen just yet. If we click on the menu, yeah, there we go. Now it's frozen. So if you go and click on a menu, but don't hold your mouse down, it's basically going to freeze the application. And really all you can do from here is just try to quit out of it. You can't actually go and kill the window like you'd expect to be able to. But if you go into something like, say, HTOP, and then go down to display, then just kill that one, then it will basically be fine. Just keep that in mind that even though this does exist, it is very, very buggy. Off camera, I got us back to where we were. Now, because this is a GUI application, most of what you can do can be done with these menu controls off the side here, but there are a bunch of hotkeys you can work with as well. So if you wanna go and check those, go into the help, go to the overview, and this basically lists all of them out. Now, if you ever forget them, this is probably the first place you should actually be looking. If you want a more general overview of Image Magic, though, if you go back to the help and then go to browse documentation, that will go and open up the Image Magic documentation inside of your web browser. Now, it does seem like the Image Magic website is being a bit slow today. Really, the only hotkeys that are probably worth remembering are Control Z to undo and Control R to redo. Because we have a blank canvas, Canvas. Let's go into the image editing section. So this is basically going to contain things like say Annotating the image adding borders adding frames adding some color to it drawing on it Let's go to draw because that sounds kind of fun So basically we can go and say select the uh, I guess how we want to draw whether we want to draw rectangles and things like that So Let's go and add a rectangle in here. It is going to be a bit slow But that's sort of what you'd expect from a image magic GUI and let's go and add something else. Let's add a Fill rectangle, so this is basically a rectangle that's going to be filled in. Let's go and change our color and then add a new shape in. So we have all these predefined colors right here, but we can also go and use the color browser as well. So let's go and say, I don't know, select forest green. Sure, why not? And let's switch over to a fill ellipse. Why not? And let's add it right there. Now, if you notice my camera is lagging a bit, that's because this is basically writing to a a very simple X window, which means it's gonna sort of be interrupting everything OBS is trying to capture. While it is normally going to be laggy, it seems way worse because of OBS. There are other things we can go and control, like say the line width and things like that, but for now, I think we're gonna be done with this. So if we're done, we go and click on dismiss, it'll take us back to the previous section. I'm gonna add some text, and then we're gonna start messing with some image effects. Let's go back to image edit, go to annotate, and let's say I wanna type 
right here, for example. So this is art. Now you can go and modify the font and the font color, the font size, things like that. But for now, I think that's going to do just fine for this magical piece of artwork we have right here. So we have all of the general sort of effects you'd expect to see in an image editor like this. So if we go to the Enhance section, we have things like Hue, Saturation, Brightness, Gamma, uh, Dull, Negate, Grayscale, basically everything you'd expect to see. So let's go to the Brightness. Let's go and raise that up to, I don't know, 170. Click Apply. Everything is much brighter now. Let's go back to Enhance, go to the Saturation. Let's set this one to 200. Click apply, everything's way more saturated now, and let's say modify the hue as well, and set this one to 60. I have no idea what this is going to do, because usually when you do an image hue, it's going to have like a description of where along the line each number is going to be, but let's see what setting this to 60 is going to do. So now this is a yellow circle instead of a green one. Now we also have effects and also effects, but this time spelled as F slash X. I don't know why there's two menus here, I don't know why they're not merged together, or maybe one of them just given a different name, but that's sort of what they've decided to do. So this one has things like, say, Despeckle, Reduce Noise, Add Noise, Sharpen, Blur, uh, Shade, Raise, I'm not sure what Shade and Raise do, I haven't actually played with those before in GIMP, and the other one has things like, say, Solarize, Sepia Tone, Implode, Vignette, Wave, Oil Paint. So let's go to the first effects menu and add, say, for example, some noise. And let's go to the Laplacian noise, add noise. And that, I don't know how well that comes off on the camera, but there is a, uh, a bit of noise on the actual image now. Now let's go and add, say, a, a bit of sharpening. So back into the first effects menu, go to the Sharpen option. And, I don't know, let's set this to 0, 0 0.0 and then by 5.0. Sure, I don't know what that's going to do, but it did something. It made, like, it It kind of seems like a sort of sun sort of thing now. And then going to the other effects menu, let's say add a sepia tone to this one. That one's fairly straightforward what that does. Let's set it to 99% uh, sepia. And now it has a sepia tone to it. The transform menu is fairly self-explanatory what that actually contains. If you've ever used an image editor before, it's all pretty straightforward. So things like, say, crop, flop, flip, rotating, and rolling, things like that. Nothing really too crazy. The same with, say, view, for example. View is basically just for zooming in and out on the image. And then the miscellaneous menu, or I guess miscellany in this case. I don't know why they spelt it like that. That has things like, say, showing a preview of the image, showing a histogram, showing the image as matte, things like that. And if you have multiple images opened up in display, you can also show a slideshow as well. I wanted to save my work of art, but I clicked on the format option in the save menu. Then the application sort of froze a little bit. So can I quit out of this? No, it, it's basically stuck here. So make sure you don't click on the format button either. What I was trying to show you was how to open up that slideshow. So basically with display, we can actually go and pass in as many file names as we want. So for example, this one right here, this one right here, this one right here. Go and run that. Move this window over so we can actually see the menu. Click on the slideshow button down here. Then set the time to actually switch between the images. Let's set this to two and click on slideshow. Now every two seconds, this should switch to the next image. And then when it gets to the last image, it's going to quit out of the application. Or if you prefer to just open up, say, a bunch of images, not really worrying about what their names are, you could also go and use a file glob as well. So in this case, I'm gonna go and open up all the PNG images. And you don't have to just go and use a slideshow. You could also go and do something like, say, edit this image, then go into file, save it, and then go to the next image modify this one, save it, go to the next image, so on and so forth. Now you may have looked at this GUI window and thought, this thing looks absolutely horrible. I have no idea what's going on with this GUI framework. Well, from what I understand, I don't think it's actually running a framework. I think this might actually be a native X11 window, which would explain why the scaling is absolutely horrible and it's really difficult to configure and it's really buggy. I wouldn't recommend writing native X11 windows, but that sort of shows how old this application actually is. Now, the whole idea of an image magic GUI just sort of baffles me because if you want to go and use a GUI image editor, things like GIMP will just 100% of the time be a better option. They'll be less buggy, 
they'll just be far more easy to use. If you want to use something like Image Magic, it's a really good tool if you want to go and automate stuff. So for example, let's say you upload images that you take of nature or something and you want to put a watermark on there using something like image magic and then always putting the watermark in the exact same location that is an absolutely perfect use case for it but this actually does have a purpose it just probably shouldn't have an image editor attached to it and that is more as you'd expect the name to suggest as an image viewer so if you want to go and say make modifications with image magic you don't really have any way of actually seeing what those modifications actually were unless you have a different image viewer actually installed. So it sort of makes sense for the Image Magic package to actually come with an image viewer so you can actually go and see those changes after you've actually made them to make sure that you've actually made the changes in a way that makes sense. Obviously, most people do have their own image viewer installed, but even so, it is cool that this does come with it. I am entirely aware that you shouldn't really use this as an image editor, but I can't help but respect the person who sat down and said, Hey, I'm going to write a native X11 window that acts as a GUI interface for Image Magic. Even if nobody will ever want to use that, it's still cool that that exists. As always, I'd like to remind you guys that subscribing to the channel does really help out. And if you are enjoying the content, hit that little button down below because that's the thing that YouTubers tell you to do. So I think that's going to be basically everything for me. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Montezar, Will, Brennan, Chikabento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, uh, Peter Lee, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all my $2 supporters. I think there might still be an extra name on there that I have to remove. I might be mistaken, though. So... If you want to go watch my content on a different platform, I've got my content over on things like Odyssey, Library, and BitChute. And if you want to watch my podcast, that is Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. So I think that's going to be everything for me, and I'm out.